Daniel O'Rourke's Wonderful Voyage to the Moon by Thomas Crotton Crooker, 1798-1854 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Lars Rolander People may have heard of the renowned adventures of Daniel O'Rourke, but how few are there who know that the cause of all his perils above and below was neither more nor less than his having slept under the walls of the Focas Tower. "'I am often asked to tell it, sir,' said he, "'so that this is not the first time. The master's son, you see, had come from beyond foreign parts in France and Spain as young gentlemen used to go, before Bonaparte or any such was heard of. And sure enough there was a dinner given to all the people on the ground, gentle and simple, high and low, rich and poor. The old gentlemen were the gentlemen after all, saving your honour's presence. They'd swear at a body a little, to be sure, and maybe give one a cut of a whip now and then but we were no losers by it in the end, and they were so easy and civil, and kept such rattling houses, and thousands of welcomes, and there was no grinding for rent, and few agents, and there was hardly a tenant on the estate that did not taste of his landlord's bounty often and often in the year. But now it's another thing. No matter for that, sir, for I'd better be telling you my story." Well, we had everything of the best and plenty of it, and we ate and we drank and we danced, and the young master, by the same token, danced with Peggy Barry from Botherin, a lovely young couple they were, though they are both long enough now. To make a long story short, I got, as a body may say, the same thing as tipsy almost, for I can't remember ever at all no ways how i left the place only i did leave it that's certain well i thought for all that in myself i just stepped to molly cronohans the fairy woman to speak a word about the bracket heifer that was bewitched and so as i was crossing the stepping-stones at the ford of ballysenoch and was looking up at the stars and blessing myself for why it was Lady Day. I missed my foot, and souls I fell into the water. Death alive, thought I. I'll be drowned now. However, I began swimming, swimming, swimming away for the dear life, till at last I got ashore, somehow or other. But never the one of me can tell how upon a dissolute island. I wandered and wandered about there, without knowing where I wandered, until at last I got into a big bog. The moon was shining as bright as day, or your fair lady's eyes, sir, with your pardon for mentioning her, and I looked east and west, and north and south, and every way, and nothing did I see but bog, bog, bog. I could never find out how I got into it and my heart grew cold with fear, for sure and certain I was that it would be my barren place. So I sat down upon a stone, which, as good luck would have it, was close by me, and I began to scratch my head and sing the Ulagon, when all of a sudden the moon grew black, and I looked up and saw something for all the world as if it was moving down between me and it and i could not tell what it was down it came with a pounce and looked at me full in the face and what was it but an eagle as fine a one as ever flew from the kingdom of Kerry? so he looked at me in the face and says he to me daniel o'rourke says he how do you do very well i thank you sir says i I hope you're well, wandering out of my senses all the time, how an eagle came to speak like a Christian. What brings you here, Dan? says he. Nothing at all, sir, says I. Only I wish I was safe home again. 
is it out of the island you want to go dan says he tis sir says i so i up and told him how i had taken a drop too much and fell into the water how i swam to the island and how i got into the bog and did not know my way out of it dan says he after a minute's thought though it is very improper for you to get drunk on lady day yet as you are a decent sober man who tends mass well and never flings stones at me or mine nor cries out after us in the fields my life for yours says he so get up on my back and grip me well for fear you'd fall off and i'll fly you out of the bog i'm afraid says i your honour's making game of me for who ever heard of riding a horseback on an eagle before pawn the honour of a gentleman says he putting his right foot on his breast i'm quite in earnest and so now either take my offer or starve in the bog besides i see that your weight is sinking the stone it was true enough as he said for i found the stone every minute going from under me i had no choice so thinks i to myself faint heart never won fair lady and this is fair persuadance i thank your honour says i for the load of your civility and i'll take your kind offer i therefore mounted upon the back of the eagle and held him tight enough by the throat and up he flew in the air like a lark little i knew the trick he was going to serve me up 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 god knows how far up he flew why then said i to him thinking he did not know the right road home very civilly because why i was in his power entirely sir says i please your honour's glory and with humble submission to your better judgment if you'd fly down a bit you're now just over my cabin and i could be put down there and many thanks to your worship arradan said he do you think me a fool look down in the next field and don't you see two men and a gun by my word it would be no joke to be shot this way to oblige a drunken blackguard that i picked up of a cold stone in a bog bother you said i to myself but i did not speak out for where was the use well sir up he kept flying flying and i asking him every minute to fly down and all to no use where in the world are you going sir says i to him hold your tongue dan says he mind your own business and don't be interfering with the business of other people faith this is my business i think says i be quiet dan says he so i said no more at last where should we come to but to the moon itself now you can't see it from this but there is or there was in my time a reaping hook sticking out of the side of the moon this way drawing the figure on the ground with the end of his stick dan said the eagle i'm tired with this long fly i had no notion twas so far and my lord sir said i who in the world axed you to fly so far was it i did not i beg and pray and beseech you to stop half an hour ago there's no use talking dan said he i'm tired bad enough so you must get off and sit down on the moon until i rest myself is it sit down on the moon said i is it upon that little round thing then why then sure i'd fall off in a minute and be killed and split and smashed all to bits you are a vile deceiver so you are not at all dan said he you can catch fast hold of the reaping hook that's sticking out of the side of the moon and will keep you up i won't then said i maybe not said he quite quite if you don't my man i shall just give you a shake 
and one slap of my wing and send you down to the ground where every bone of your body will be smashed as small as a drop of dew on a cabbage leaf in the morning why then i am in a fine way said i to myself ever to have come along with the likes of you and so giving him a hearty curse in irish for fear he'd know what i said i got off his back with a heavy heart took hold of the reaping hook and sat down upon the moon and a mighty cold seat it was i can tell you that when he had me there fairly landed he turned about on me and said good morning to you daniel o'rourke said he i think i've nicked you fairly now you robbed my nest last year twas true enough for him but how he found it out is hard to say and in return you are freely welcome to cool your heels dangling upon the moon like a cock throw is that all and is this the way you leave me you brute you says i you ugly unnatural bast and is this the way you serve me at last bad luck to yourself with your hooked nose and to all your breed you blackguard twas all to no manner of use he spread out his great big wings burst out a laughing and flew away like lightning i bawled after him to stop but i might have called and bawled for ever without his minding me away he went and i never saw him from that day to this sorrow fly away with him you may be sure i was in a disconsolate condition and kept roaring out for the bare grief when all at once a door opened right in the middle of the moon creaking on its hinges as if it had not been opened for a month before i suppose they never thought of greasing em and out there walks who do you think but the man in the moon himself i knew him by his busk good morrow to you daniel o'rourke said he how do you do very well thank your honour said i i hope your honour's well what brought you here then said he so i told him how i was little overtaken in liquor at the master's and how i was cast on a dissolute island and how i lost my way in the bog and how the thief of an eagle promised to fly me out of it and how instead of that he had fled me up to the moon dan said the man in the moon taking a pinch of snuff when i was done you must not stay here indeed sir says i tis much against my will i am here at all but how am i to go back that's your business said he dan mine is to tell you that here you must not stay so be off in less than no time i'm doing no harm says i only holding on hard by the reaping hook lest i fall off that's what you must not do dan says he pray sir says i may i ask how many you are in family that you would not give a poor traveller lodgings i'm sure it is not so often your travel with strangers coming to see you for it is a long way i'm by myself dan says he but you'd better let go the reaping hook faith and with your leave says i i'll not let go the grip and the more you bids me the more i won't let go so i will you had better dan says he again why then my little fellow says i taking the whole weight of him with my eye from head to foot there are two words to that bargain and i'll not budge but you may if you like we'll see how that is to be says he and back he went giving the door such a great bang after him for it was plain he was huffed that i thought the moon and all would fall down with it well i was preparing myself to try strength with him when back again he comes with the kitchen cleaver in his hand and without saying a word he gives two bangs to the handle of the reaping hook that was keeping me up and whop 
it came in too good morning to you dan says the spiteful little old blackguard when he saw me cleanly falling down with a bit of the handle in my hand i thank you for your visit and fair weather after you daniel i had no time to make my answer to him for i was tumbling over and over and rolling and rolling at the rate of a fox hunt god help me says i but this is a pretty pickle for a decent man to be seen in at this time of night i am now sold fairly the word was not out of my mouth when whiz what should fly by close to my ear but a flock of wild geese all the way from my own bog of baljashenoch else how should they know me the old gander who was their general turning about his head cried out to me is that you dan the same said i not a bit daunted now at what he said for i was by this time used to all kinds of bedevilment and besides i knew him of old good morrow to you says he daniel o'rourke how are you in health this morning very well sir says i i thank you kindly drawing my breath for i was mightily in want of some i hope your honour's the same i think tis falling you are daniel says he you may say that sir says i and where are you going all the way so fast said the gander so i told him how i had taken the drop and how i came on the island and how i lost my way in the bog and how the thief of an eagle flew me up to the moon and how the man in the moon turned me out dan said he i'll save you put your hand out and catch me by the leg and i'll fly you home sweet is your hand in a pitcher of honey my jewel says i though all the time i thought in myself that i don't much trust you but there was no help so i caught the gander by the leg and away i and the other geese flew after him as fast as hops we flew and we flew and we flew until we came right over the wide ocean i knew it well for i saw cape clear to my right hand sticking up out of the water ah my lord said i to the goose for i thought it best to keep a civil tongue in my head anyway fly to land if you please it is impossible you see dan said he for a while because you see we are going to arabia to arabia said i that's surely some place in foreign parts far away oh mr goose why then to be sure i'm a man to be pitied among you whist whist you fool said he hold your tongue i tell you arabia is a very decent sort of place as like west carberry as one egg is like another only there is a little more sand there just as we were talking a ship hove in sight scudding so beautiful before the wind ah then sir said i will you drop me on the ship if you please we are not fair over it said he we are said i we are not said he if i dropped you now you would go splash into the sea i would not says i i know better than that for it's just clean under us so let me drop now at once if you must you must said he there take your own way and he opened his claw and faith he was right sure enough i came down plump into the very bottom of the salt sea down to the very bottom i went and i gave myself up then for ever when a whale walked up to me scratching himself after his night's rest and looked me full in the face and never the word did he say but lifting up his tail he splashed me all over again with the cold salt water till there wasn't a dry stitch upon my whole carcass and i heard somebody saying 
twas a voice i knew too get up you drunken brute out of that and with that i woke up and there was judy with a tub full of water which she was splashing all over me for rest her soul though she was a good wife she never could bear to see me in drink and had a bitter hand of her own get up said she again and of all places in the parish would no place serve your turn to lie down upon but under the old walls of Carrigafuca. an uneasy resting i'm sure you had of it and sure enough i had for i was fairly bothered out of my senses with eagles and men of the moons and flying ganders and whales driving me through bogs and up to the moon and down to the bottom of the great ocean if i was in drink ten times over long would it be before i'd lie down in the same spot again i know that end of daniel o'rourke's wonderful voyage to the moon by thomas crotton crooker read by Lars rolander